how is it that you relate to mysticism, to mystical experience? Oh, you mean as a source of valid data about what's going on? Not even that far. I mean, that's that's one way of saying, of, of judging it in one way or another, and it's, it doesn't necessarily be valid data. It's just, I mean, you've been interested, I mean, this library, obviously, mysticism is completely surrounding us. Well, I guess I would say the more personal the mystical indicator is, probably the more likely I am to take it seriously. In other words, it seems to me if you extrapolate your mystical insight beyond the personal, you probably enter into the domain of inflation, of some, some kind of psychological inflation. And, uh, so was Plato inflated? Was Plato inflated? No, probably not, but he probably gets a pass as uh, some kind of uh, pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> you could just start out, you know, start out by talking about the, the relationship between technology and, and shamanism. Well, you remember Iliad's basic book which is shamanism, the archaic techniques of ecstasy. That book was originally written in French, and in French, as I don't have to tell you, the word technique has this dual meaning of both a way to do something and a technology. So, uh, from Iliad's point of view, shamanism was always about using techniques uh, to achieve these, what he called, ruptures of plane. And these ruptures of plane were these breakthroughs into these healing spaces. And for him it was always drugs, yoga, or uh, ordeal, or maybe yoga slash ordeal. So, uh, in a way, pushing on the frontier of language and pushing on the frontier of, of technique always brought some form of breakthrough. I mean, I suppose the perfect example would be fire, where fire must have been something... We talked about the Smith thing yesterday. But so fire technology, the transformation, the visible transformation of materials through heat, and all of that leads straight into better weapons, stronger building materials, and uh, so forth. So, uh, I mean, can you, do you see then that even though the West turns away from the world view of, of pre-modern enchanted the enchanted universe is that there's still something in that process of technological development which has which is linked to those older technologies well the way chips are made and the way solid solid state objects are assembled often is just a matter of <clears throat> bringing a, a mix of materials to a certain temperature and a certain uh, proportion of materials and then standing back and letting the laws of physics rearrange the atoms so that electricity or information or something flows through this in an unexpected way. So I think we're still involved in discovering what can be coaxed from the from the physical world just by letting physical laws unravel themselves. And that seems to you connected with an old, the, 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 the operation of doing that goes farther back than just modern science. Yeah, at low temperatures it's about psychoactive drugs and brewing and combining biological materials. And then at higher temperatures it becomes about this other thing. And one of my alchemical readings of modernity is that electricity is a kind of element in the old sense of element 
and that it has certain properties that evolve as you develop a, almost a shamanic relationship with it in the sense of using it and it developing a relationship with electrical potentials. Uh -huh. And that that sets up a kind of, that interjects a kind of life into the human organism that fundamentally changes it because it's introducing this element of electricity which has certain properties of communication. I mean, electricity is very strange. It's pretty far out stuff. You just laid out like electricity to somebody and just kind of said, these are how these fields work and they're not actually, da 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 da. It's like total science fiction. We're just sort of used to that story. Right. But it's an amazing thing. And that, those potentials are being then introduced into human communication. So that fundamentally changes them. And I think spiritualism is like a reflection in the archetypal imagination of modernity about the kind of communication that is introduced by electricity. Interesting. It's sort of, you know, McLuhan had this idea about the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Ghost, was electricity, and the, the covering of the earth by the matrix of uh, the Holy Ghost had initiated the third world age and all this. Right, and that picks up a line of thought that's been carried through since the since it first starts. I mean, the, right. the idea of electricity is born in an, in an alchemical imagination. It's born at a, at a pre uh, point to the, the sort of royal society break or whatever you want to call the, the genuine scientific uh, chip transformation that split alchemy into the shadow realm of culture. But uh, in uh, it comes up in that alchemical matrix. In Mason Dixon, there are scenes in Philadelphia in the 1770s in, in coffee houses where uh, electricity is being sold as a drug. You pay your money and then you grab onto this thing and they rip this thing around until it throws you off and you pick yourself up off the floor and then go back and pay again and get more. Just this insane scene. <laughs> it's funny to say, but you look at 20th century science, and, it, uh, and even though its its story has nothing to do with alchemy, that it really is this kind of fulfilling of visionary notions about the way that matter and energy and mind could be stitched together. Well, and it turns out it's all true. I mean, what 20th century science proved is you can actually do almost anything. And so, you know, you want to change lead to gold, you want to create life, you want to store information in crystals, all these things. It's now come to pass, and much, much more besides uh, proving that matter is really magical material that you can pull off all these tricks with. So what is it about the alchemy that really kind of got you? The surrealism of it, the, the shifting imagery, the associational, um, yeah, the associational schemas are very attractive. They are. What, is be, what do you think is behind them? Well, you know, the basic concept is that somehow intuition and nature are reflective of each other. Until that hypothesis fails, we should probably hang on to it. Uh, because look how far we've gotten. I mean, it is really bizarre how much of nature the human mind seems to be able to understand. I mean, my God, instruments are circling around Ganymede based on some guy in a powdered wig looking out his crenellated window, you know, figuring out this shit. How did they pull that trick off? Well, I mean, that, I mean, that gets that whole thing about the, the sort of destiny of, of technology or the way that it, I mean, it's yeah, it's like a white cane, and you're just feeling forward into the universe, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, what is it all leading toward? 